Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part three of my job history series. If you haven't watched parts one and two, you'll find links to them down below. Go watch those, then come on back. All right, so in the previous two videos, we've got the current and previous jobs displaying down here. We got our big list of jobs, you know, put all their jobs in the system here. And then when you go to one of their records like that, it'll show you what their current and previous jobs are. But what if this stuff changes and you close the form, you want it to come back here and be able to refresh it. All right, so I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Now, the first way is a manual effort, but it doesn't involve any programming. All right, we can use one of the command button wizards for that. The second way will involve a teeny tiny little bit of code, literally one line, two lines if you want to be safe. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. But first, let me show you how to do it manually. All right, so let's say you come in. Now, these are read-only, by the way. You can't come in here and change these, right? These are DLOOKUP, so they're read-only. In fact, what I usually tend to do with read-only fields like this is I like to make them like a light gray that just tells the user visually, hey, you can't change that stuff. That's just a look up and see only. Okay, so now they know they can't change that stuff. But let's say you come in here and instead of Fleet Admiral, let's just put uh, you know a couple exclamation points after the end of it. Close that and now it doesn't refresh. Now, you can close the form and reopen it, but that's a pain, especially if you're not on the first record. Now, you can come in here on the Home tab and hit this Refresh button, and that will then force this form to refresh. It pulls all the data in again. But again, that's that's a training issue. You got to teach your users where to find it. It's a bit of a pain. And personally, I don't like to let the users have access to the full ribbon. I disable this ribbon. And I talk about this a lot more in my more developer classes, my higher end classes. But what we could do is just make them a nice little refresh button right here. So design view. And again, this is on the command button wizard. Drop a button. It's going to be under form operations, refresh form data. It's the same thing as hitting refresh on the ribbon. All right, next, text refresh is fine. Or if you want a picture, you know how to do all that stuff, right? All right, next, give it a meaningful name, refresh button, finish, and there's your refresh button. I'll put it right maybe under jobs or whatever, wherever you want to put it. All right, so now save it, close it. If you open it up, go into jobs, make a change. We'll get rid of those explanation points, okay? close it and then hit refresh, it will refresh that form. All right, same thing if you're on, uh, let's go uh, over here. All right, engineer, edit, engineering, whatever you want to call it, close it and then hit refresh. Okay, beautiful. Now, it'd be nice to be able to do this without the user having to hit that manual refresh button. Is there a way when this form closes that it can automatically refresh this one. Yes, it can. That'll involve either a macro or some VBA. Now, personally, I prefer VBA. It's not hard. I think, honestly, once you learn how to do VBA, it's it's easier than writing a macro. It really is, in my opinion. And I've been teaching this stuff literally for decades. I think VBA is a lot simpler than using the macro editor. Now, if you want to dip your feet in, if you want to get your toes wet, how's it, how's it dip your toes in, get your feet wet, whichever, whichever way that is. <laughs> Go watch my intro to VBA video. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. I'm going to show you right now what you have to do. But if you want to learn more, go watch this video too. Okay? This will really help you. So here's how easy this is. You ready? Okay. We're going to right-click on this guy. Go to Design View. Bring up the Form Properties by double-clicking right here. All right? That brings up the Property Sheet. This is the Events tab. All of these events are different actions that fire at different times. There's an on open event that happens when op that when you open the form up, right? There's um, there's an on delete when you delete something. There's an on click when you click on something, okay? What we're looking for is on close. There's an on close event. This event's gonna run, right, when the, when the former report is closed, okay? Which is when we want this to refresh this guy, when this form closes, okay? Hit the dot, dot, dot button now. On my system, you'll see this Visual Basic for Applications window pop up. You might get a little window that asks you to choose your builder. There's three different builders. There's the Macro Builder, the Expression Builder, and the Code Builder. You want to pick the Code Builder. All right, in my Intro to VBA video, I show you how to turn that little window off so it always uses the Code Builder. This is where we want to be, right here. I'm in the Form Close event for the job form. Okay? Now, in here, we're going to put one line of code. 
Okay, and it looks like this. Forms, customer F, that's a bang, or exclamation point. Forms, customer F, dot refresh. That's it. That's all you need to do. In other words, when the job form closes, refresh the customer form. That's it. See how simple this is? One line of code can add that functionality, and now the user doesn't have to hit, have to hit that refresh button. Okay, so save it, close it, close it. Now from here, I'm going to go into the jobs form. I'm going to change engineering. Let's just change it back to engineer. Right now, watch. I'm going to close this form. Bam, and it refreshed automatically without me doing anything. You see that? Isn't that cute? Isn't that cool? That's the power of VB. L just little things like that. One line of code here and there. Okay? Now, like I said before, you need two lines of code just to be safe because this could possibly happen. Watch. If they open this, then they close this form, and then they do this, you'll get an error message because it can't find customer F because the user already closed it. So what we can do in this case, we can go to debug. We'll fix this, right? All you have to do is before that line, just say on error, resume next. Basically, that says if you encounter an error, just ignore it and, and skip it and continue on. There's lots of different ways to handle error handling and all that, but we're not going to talk about that today. I got whole separate videos on error handling, but that will just ignore it if this line throws an error. And again, like I mentioned before, if you really want to prevent that from happening, you can take this form, go to other, and now make this modal. Modal means you can't do anything behind the job form until you close it. And in this particular case, I would definitely use that. Save that, close it, close it. Let's open up this. And now when I open up the jobs form, this guy is in the front. Notice I can't click anything behind it. Yeah, there's some stuff you could do on the ribbon, but again, that's another reason why I usually turn the ribbon off. All right, but I have to finish up with the job form before I can close this guy. So I'd have to come in here and say, uh, you know, Fleet Admiral A Division or whatever. And now when I close this, boop, it runs and it refreshes and everybody's happy and everything works and everything's grand. <laughs> so that's how you can do the refresh both without programming with a little button and with programming with a little VBA. Now, before I let you go, we are going to do an extended cut. I'm going to show you how to find employment gaps. So if they've got, if they worked from 98 to 2020, right? And then they were, they didn't have a job until 2023. It'll say, hey, there's an employment gap starting on this date. And then there's another employment gap here. We're going to do three months, I think, is the default that I have it set for. So if it sees a gap of more than three months, it'll put it in a list down here. Because that's important for job recruiters or for employers, right? You want to know, hey, why weren't you working for these three years here? What were you doing? You were taking your time to study under the Microsoft Access Guru to learn how to do this stuff, right? <laughs> Speaking of learning, if you want to learn a lot more about Access, I got all kinds, tons of lessons on my website. My expert lessons are like just what you saw in, the, in this three lesson series, all right? I teach you how to do really cool stuff, just learning functions like DLOOKUP and NZ and all that stuff without any programming. It's just all functions and, and events and, and stuff like that, okay? Then if you wanna learn more than that, I do also have tons of developer lessons for the VBA programmer in you. You wanna break out and learn how to program. Okay, tons of lessons for both programmers and non-programmers on my website. Come and check them out. All right, but the extended cut is for the members of my channel, of my website, Silver Members and Up. Get access to all of my extended cut videos. Not just this one, all of them. I got lots of them. And gold members and platinum members, everybody gets some training, some lessons, some free stuff. So check it out. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed this little uh, three-part series. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time, and members, I'll see you in the extended cut. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And Amanda Nicole Consulting, specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an access database. You'll find links to the Diamond Sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. 
Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover 
lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full-length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.